Uh, on the phone now is our next guest from one of my favorite shows, definitely my favorite reality show of all time. This guy's a good man, and I, I, I'm glad he's uh, still alive and kicking and kicking ass, as a matter of fact. The great Sig Hansen from Deadliest Catch. Sig, what's up, ma'am? Oh, I just finished the cocktail, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm just <laughs> glad to be home. <laughs> yeah, so when'd you get back from the last season, man? When'd you get back in? We got back, like, uh, a little over a week ago, and then my daughter, she's 17, so I told her, well, whatever you want, you know, you got your spring break, what do you want to do? So we went to Cabo. Oh, God. Which, you know, whatever. So I go to Cabo with the wife and the kids and whatever, and then we went fishing, which, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> and then I go out there, and you got to understand, I just left, like, freaking 20 degrees ice, <laughs> <laughs> and I go down to Mexico, and I'm Norwegian, right? So my skin is pale anyway, and I look like an alligator. I'm all sunburned, and I just look like a mess. But it was for the kid, fine. I would have rather stayed home and just kept drinking, but that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Sig, are you one of these guys? You, do you drink when you're out fishing, when you're out on the sea there fishing? Do you drink? You know what? Uh, in the old days, they would, but we don't do... No, 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 no. You we don't can't. do that. You can't. I well, mean, you just got to draw the line because, uh, number one, you got Coast Guard regulations, and uh, you just can't do it. But would I like to? Yes. Do uh, I? No. I noticed from watching the show, yeah, that you don't really see you guys doing that, which is good. I mean, you're being professional because you probably like a cocktail every once in a while, so it's, it takes a lot of willpower, right? Well, sure, but, I mean, think about it. It's like... Uh, you go out for, like, when I was a kid, we'd be gone for, you know, six to eight, nine months out of a year. You'd come home for a couple of weeks or whatever, and then you'd just pour it on. You'd, you'd make up for lost time. So, I mean, sex was never better because you'd hammer down. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, John, you, you watch this show, Deadly as yeah. Catch, right? Is it unbelievable what, what they do? Yeah, it's it's fascinating to me what you guys have to go through yeah. out there for all that time and you know endure uh, i just i'm curious i know you've got a great safety record uh, sig but uh what's the what's some of the worst injuries you've seen on uh during your time out there oh i mean we, <laughs> you know it's weird it's like uh i can remember one time when i was a kid and we were we were next to this guy he was pulling gear and they were a processor, so they, they would cook crab on board. They were processing on board. Wow. You know, we're, we're, we just catch, and then we deliver to town. And the captain calls over, and he's like, I don't know what to do. A, a kid had fallen into a vat where they cook the crab. Oh, they uh, boiled him alive. Oh, oh man. 90% wow. of his body was just fried. And, uh, I mean, what do you do? You know, uh, for me, we've had our, our, our injuries, but, uh, you know, it's broken bones and it's just little things, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you get busted up, but we haven't had anything major. So I'm, I'm real grateful and thankful. And, and that just means that we know what we're doing. And, I, yeah. and that's something I can brag about. And I do. Yeah, you should. I mean, that's the most horrifying death I've ever heard of in my life. Isn't does, that just crazy? Does that go on a lot, uh, Sig, where they process on board still? There was no. There's not too many guys that do it right now. Uh, there's just a couple of boats that do that, and um, you know. But it's one of those things where uh, you know th these boats are much bigger. They're way bigger platform, and so they got the room to do it. But uh, the majority of the boats do what we do, which is you know go out, catch them, bring them into town, and then and you do your deal. Yeah. How'd you do out there this uh, season? <laughs> It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> right. You know, it, I felt like Groundhog Day because last year, I don't know what's going on with the polar ice cap. I don't know what's going on with global warming. Right. I, 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 I don't really buy into it because I was plenty cold. But there's something <laughs> to it because I'm telling you, like, we got nailed with the ice again. It was, uh, it was miserable. And when the ice comes down, like from the Russian border, it comes down and it pushes you off your fishing grounds. You got nowhere to go, so you got to stop, or you got to fight the ice. And then right. you're you're just losing gear and time and money, and and uh, it was a pain in the butt. So we we relived last year. Now, when, do you do you think so? As far as the global warming thing is concerned, I'm like you. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what's going on, but I admit there are changes in the weather. As a fisherman who's out there, 
uh, seeing it firsthand year after year. Have you seen, since the global warming thing has come, come about and, and been a discussion in the last few years, a difference in the situation and the conditions and the weather? Uh, I got to say, yeah, I have. Right. I mean, uh, right now it's worse. But, 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 you know, when I see ice, you know, that's cold, right? It makes you feel like, oh, my God, is, this is bad. But at the same time, we're seeing ice prematurely. So that tells you that it's it's building earlier, but it's breaking off earlier. So there, there's definitely something weird going on. You know, normally we don't see it for April or May, and now all of a sudden we're seeing it earlier. So it, it's different, it, definitely. Uh, this just broke over the wire here. It says the deadliest catch is about to embark on its ninth season, but there is one person noticeably missing from the action, Elliot Neese. Nice, who leads the Ramblin' Rose crew into perilous seas, was not on deck for the season preview. The episode doesn't air until April 16th. Uh, everything all right with Elliot? Where is he? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? The, he's doing all right. I think the, um, man, how do I do this? I think the, let's just say that uh, he's going to be on the show. Right. And maybe... <laughs> Hypothetically, the kid could have got a boat. Who knows? Maybe he's running another boat. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. You so know, it's but good for him if he did. Yeah, it's prosperous. It's pros you know, I'll still kick his ass. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sig, what are some of the, the funniest pranks? You know, there's the back and forth with you and, and John Hillstrand. What are some of the funniest pranks you guys have pulled on one another? Oh, my God. You know what? It's like... Uh, well, as far as pranks go, that goes back for generations, practically. Yeah. You know? uh, on the show, they don't always show everything, because they got, like, five months to squeeze into, like, this, you know, what is it, 18-episode show. Right. And so they kind of pick and choose and, and try to put a show together out of, out of all that time that they film. But, uh, I mean, the Hillstrands... Literally, they should be, I think that they should be put into, like, an insane asylum. Because <laughs> they are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they're cool. But, I mean, you know, like, guys will always punk you, you know. I mean, you might be pulling pots, and next thing you know, there's a toilet that comes up in a pot. <laughs> oh. Or a workout bike or something goofy like that, just goofy stuff. But yeah. uh, uh, the, the Hillstrands did this flower trick where you'd, you'd pull your gear and then this big bag of flour comes up and it blows up in your face. <laughs> well, they were just being polite. Right. The, uh, the, the old school way to do it would be to actually defecate <laughs> oh. in a bag oh. and tie that oh. off. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, but now that we're all politically correct and, you know, yeah. everybody's happy and flowers are blooming and there's always sunshine in the air. We don't play that on TV, I guess, so we have to be nice. <laughs> How much longer do you think you got in you to, to do this for a second? How much longer do you think you can go out there and keep doing it? It's a hard life, man. Um, well, I'm too stupid to flip burgers at McDonald's, so <laughs> I think I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, but uh, oh, I'll be doing it for a long time. Because, I mean, the, the wheelhouse, you got your stress. The deck, you got, you know, physical fatigue. So I'll be there for a while. I mean, I'm 47 years old. I got I got a ways to go. Um, financially, we're good. You know, I'm, I'm I'm proud to say, but it's it's a, it's we love it. I mean, I I'll do it as long as I can. And uh, I mean, I've had guys that uh, it's so funny. I had this guy come up and he's like, you know, we sell uh, mattresses, so I want you to do a mattress co co commercial for me. And I go, you're a freaking idiot. I don't sleep, number one. Why would I do a mattress commercial for you? You know? It's like, get real. I go, I fish for a living. Yeah, I got the TV thing. Yes, I can do endorsements. Yes, I, you know, the whole Hollywood thing is great. I get it. But at the end of the day... I'm still going to do what I do. Right. You're a fisherman. I mean, yeah. th I think for, uh, out of any other profession, that really is in your blood, being a fisherman, right? It's it's just passed down, and it's almost like you have to do it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, come on, man. We were like, we were drawing pictures of boats before we could learn how to write our name. You know, <laughs> that's just how it was. You hey, know? Yeah, for sure. Hey, yeah, you know, on the show, the competition kind of between the vessels, I'm just wondering... If the animosity 
if that you know feeling if you feel that resentment uh from other you know crews if is that real or is it just kind of played up for tv purposes no it's real because you've got i mean at the end of the at the end of the day all the guys have known each other for a lot of years i mean i've known keith colburn for many years and, and the hill strands and phil when he was alive you know forever forever in a day mm-hmm. but it's like a sports team you know once you get out on the field gloves come off and it is what it is right you know but every boat has its own personality so every boat like the crews they they, they the, the, the crew members create this team and and at sea is one thing but what's worse what they don't film is when you get to town right because when you get to town that's when you're celebrating. You either did well or you didn't. And if you did great, you're bragging, right? Yeah. And so the other boats, maybe you did good or you did bad, whatever. But that's when it gets crazy because the guys are, they're like, you know, a bunch of uh, cats on a hot tin roof. You can't, you don't know what to do with them. And they're <laughs> fighting and, and doing all this stuff and bragging and going at each other. And, uh, I mean, that's a show in itself. Trust me. How horny are you when you get back? <laughs> Well, honestly, I feel like every time I come home, it's like uh, it's like a honeymoon, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's what makes I mean, sense. You know, it's it's good because you, you and my wife, her dad was a fisherman. She's actually from Norway, so our like I said, her family's Norwegian. So I mean, it's just like this, I don't know, embedded in your brain. It's inbred. Sure. And so she gets it. And hey, when uh, you come home, like I said, if you've been gone for a few months, you got a lot of. A lot of making up to do. <laughs> yeah. Catching up to them. Hey, uh, so when does the deadliest catch? When's the premiere this year, Sig? I think that's the. I think it's the sixteenth here. So April sixteenth. Yeah. Okay. The deadliest catch uh, is uh, is about to embark on. Yeah, it's ninth season, and it's on the Discovery Channel. April sixteenth. Check it out here, and uh, Sig will be watching for you, man. Stay uh, stay good. Be careful, and we'll talk again, brother. It's all good. All I know is I got a lot of drinking to make up for, and I'm on it. <laughs> Great job, man. All right, be careful. All right, guys. <laughs> don't, get, don't get hurt on Cabo. <laughs>